We'll go. All right, so 9-8, we are switching gears here from linear equations, which we've been on for two months now, I think. And we're gonna start talking about some graphs that are nonlinear. And one of those nonlinear graphs is called a quadratic. And we've saw it kind of earlier when we were going over the homework and I said that number three on your homework was that U-shaped graph. That's what a quadratic graph looks like. And it can be an upside, it can either be upright or it can be upside down, um, depending on the equation. And we're gonna look at that today. Um, and we're gonna learn how to graph these. And it's a very similar process to how you learned how to graph linear equations, okay? Um, and I do wanna say in looking at this, and then you guys know I also teach high school algebra. So when I first saw this, I was gonna show you that way. And then I realized you, we kind of just dip our toe in the water of quadratics in eighth grade. When you get into next year, you will learn other um, methods of graphing these, okay? Because there are a couple of different ways to graph them. But for eighth grade standards and for what you need to know as far as this year, we're just gonna kind of dip our toe in the water and we're not really gonna get into more complex equations, okay? Because really a quadratic equation, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you kind of what a basic quadratic equation is and then show you how the ones we're dealing with are a little basic, okay? So a typical quadratic equation, and if you would just kind of write this over here underneath that example table that we'll talk about in a minute. Your quadratic equation is AX squared plus BX plus C. Okay, everybody write that down. That's your quadratic, that's your kind of like your y equals mx plus b is your generic linear. This is your generic quadratic. It's not, I promise. And really even what you do with them next year isn't scary. They're, they're really not bad, okay? The square just freaks people out. Take that off, please. So, no, I didn't say today isn't really, today isn't hard, it just takes a little bit of work. Okay, so um, the A, the B, and the C are just numbers. They can be fractions, they can be decimals, they can be whole numbers, they can be negative numbers, okay? The X squared and the X are generic. So you don't need to write this part down in your notes, but remember when we were doing Y equals MX plus B, and I always color coded it, and I would say Y equals M, X, and then plus B. And the reason I always color coded things for you is because the M and the B were numbers, right? And they meant something to us. The M was the slope, the B was the Y intercept, but the X and the Y that I put in black, those are generic that are there in every single equation. So Y equals MX plus B, the Y equals and the X are just always there. And the M and the B can be any number fractions, whole numbers, decimals, negatives, right? We can be have a lot of things. It's the same thing with the quadratic equation. So if I were to um, do this more in a color coding type thing, I would do A and then X squared, because that's always going to be there. And then plus, and then we've got a B here, and then the X, and then we've got a plus C. And when it says plus C, you know, that's kind of generic math speak. It can be a negative. But what's always going to be the main thing that is always going to be present in a quadratic is this right here. This is, the, whoops, I'm sorry, let me, this right here. When you see X squared, that is your big indication that it's a quadratic, okay? And the reason I say the X in the middle isn't as important is because I'll show you what can happen with that X in the middle. And this is what all of yours look like. So when you get into ninth grade, you're going to be dealing with the full quadratic equation where it's got an A, B, and a C. What I noticed about the equations on y'all's homework when I was looking at it this morning is that your B value is a zero, which means it goes away. So if you look at the example right here, right, it's on your paper, 3x squared, well, the A value is a three, the X squared is there, it has to be, but your B value is missing. Right, if it's a, oops, if it's a x squared, right, the three is your a, plus b x minus four, well, your b here is a zero. Why do I know your b is a zero? Cam? Yeah, because anything times zero is zero. It kind of goes away. So because your b is not here, because that middle x is not here, 
it means your B value is zero. And that doesn't hurt anything. It actually makes these problems way easier to work. Um, but I wanted you to be aware because what, what I didn't love about all of the examples that you guys are given in eighth grade is that all of them are basic ones without that middle value. And I just don't want you to get used to. Robert, you need to sit up or stand up, okay? Those are your two options, all the way up. Thank you, sir. I don't want you to get used to just seeing 2x squared minus one. And then when you see a full one, not recognize that it's quadratic. And that's why I say the main thing to look for is this one. This one will always be there for it to be quadratic. You cannot have a B, you cannot have a C. Do we have an example of that on here? If you don't have a C, you might have Y equals two X squared. Is that a quadratic equation? It is because of this. This right here is what does it. Always and forever, that's what does it. Okay, that's what makes it quadratic. So if I were to ask you here, what's my A value, Lakin? Nope, not the X. What's my A value? It's always the, whoops. No, it's the number. Yeah, my A value is a two. What's my B value here? Cam, what's my C value here? Riley? Yeah. So they're there, but they're not there because they're zeros. Lakin? Does it always have to be squared? Can it be two here? To be a quadratic, it has to be squared. Yep. To be a quadratic, it has to be squared. And actually, tomorrow we get into cubes, and those are called cubic functions, and they're a little different. So the main thing you want to look for is the square. That's what's going to tell you it's a quadratic, okay? Now, that's just kind of an intro into quadratic equations. Now, I've given you guys a sample table that you're going to use with every single one of your problems, okay? And this is, I put it on your notes so that you could use it as a sample. And in your sample, I want you to write, these are the X values that you're going to use every single time. Now, when you get into algebra, they're not going to always be so basic and you're not going to be able to use these basic ones. But for what we need for eighth grade, here's what you're going to use. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. That is what you're going to use for your X values every time. And then we have, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this one. I'm not going to work this one out because I really don't want to waste the time to do it. I'd rather do it on one of your example problems, but no matter what your function is, right? It's a quadratic function here because of X squared. No matter what your function is, you plug in your X, you evaluate it using PEMDAS. That's important. And then you find your Y and then you write your answer as an ordered pair. And we're going to do that for every single one of these. So for this second or this first example here, we've got y equals one half x squared. We know it's quadratic. Okay, I'm going to erase all of this now. Uh, actually, I'm going to real quick, I'm just going to take a picture of that. So I do it the same every hour. All right, I'm going to erase all this so I have room now. All right, so I'm going to do a table and it doesn't have, you don't have to be Picasso here, just we're going to have an x. We're going to put our function, which is y equals negative one half x squared. We're going to give ourselves some room to work in there. We're going to have our y. And then we're going to have our x, y ordered pair that we're going to graph. Okay. And I already know we're going to do negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And I'm going to do this kind of color coded here. So the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to do this negative two in red here. So that means I'm going to take the equation y equals negative one half x squared. And in place of the x, I'm going to plug in my first x. So I've got y equals negative one half parentheses. And I'm going to plug in negative two. Try to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Squared. Okay. Now, PEMDAS matters. What do I do first? I have negative one half times negative two raised to the second power. Mm, well, more specific, think of what PEMDAS stands for. Is there anything inside the parentheses I can combine? Negative two is the only thing in there. What's next after parentheses? Exponents. 
I'm going to take negative two to the second power. Okay, so the negative one half, I'm not messing with yet because that's a multiplication. But I am going to take negative two times negative two, which is what? Positive four. Now, the only operation I have left is negative one half times four. Well, a negative times a positive is going to give me a negative. So right away in my Y column, I'm putting a negative there because I don't want to forget that a negative times a positive is negative. One half of four is two. So my ordered pair is negative two, negative two. That one's done. Now I got to start all over and I got to do the same thing with negative one. So Y equals negative one half times negative one squared equals. I plugged a negative one in where my X was. And I promise you the first three is where the work comes in. I'm gonna show you that the last two are very easy, okay? And this is why quadratics really aren't that hard. It looks like five point, but really you only gotta figure out three and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so let's stick with this purple one here. So again, PEMDAS says powers first. So I've got negative one half times Negative one times negative one is, anybody? Positive one, good. And then negative times a positive is gonna be a negative. And what is one half of one? 0.5, good. So my point here or my ordered pair is negative one, negative 0.5. So there's that one. Now zero is nice and easy. Okay, we like zero. Y equals negative one half times zero squared. Zero squared is zero times one half is anything times zero. Nice and easy, right? I like that one. So we've got zero, zero. All right, now I'm gonna show you why the next two down are really easy, okay? This is what makes quadratics pretty easy to graph. I'm gonna do it in purple again because I wanna show you that it's gonna mirror my negative one and my positive one are gonna mirror each other. I'll show you why. Y equals negative one half times positive one squared equals. Now notice in the other purple one, it was negative one squared, which goes positive. In this one, it's positive one squared, which is also what? Positive, yes, are you following me? So it's negative one half times one. Notice I wanna highlight this, not in red, let's do yellow. Notice when I get to this step, am I identical? Because when you square a negative one and you square a positive one, you get positive one on both sides. So that means that my answer is negative 0.5, which should match the other one. Now don't get lazy here and not work this one because this is a good checkpoint. If you've made an error in the upper part, this is where you'll catch it. But my point is positive one, now my X value changed, but my Y value stayed the same. And I'll show you what that's gonna do on our graph. Then we get down to our bottom one. And again, I'm gonna mirror it in red because it's gonna match my negative two and my positive two are gonna match. So y equals negative one half times positive two squared, negative one half times positive two times positive two is positive four. Again, notice what happened here. Uh, let's do this. Notice this and this, I get the exact same thing at this point because when you square a negative and when you square a positive, you still get the same answer. So what negative one half of four is negative two, which mirrors what I got above. And so my point here is two, negative two. Now I've got five points to graph. So I'm gonna come over to my graph and I'm gonna graph these five points and I'm gonna keep these kind of color coded. So if I graph the point negative two, negative two, that is right here. Then I graph the point negative one, negative one half. So I go backwards negative one and down one half. And that is that point. Then graphing the point zero, zero is nice and easy. It's right there at the origin. Now notice what happens when I get to my other side, 
of my color coding here, I've got positive one, negative five. So I go over to positive one, which is right here and down 0.5. And then when I graph my last red one, it is positive two, negative two, which is here. So notice what happened. My zero became my turning point for my graph. So I'm, I'm heading one direction. I hit my zero or my turning point and I turn back and I start heading the other direction. So your graph looks like this. It's an upside down U. And what you should notice, okay, and you'll get into this more in algebra, but what you should notice is where you took the turn, this right here, Okay, that should be your mirror point. Have you guys ever in art class taken ink, folded a piece of paper and put ink on one side? Jake, have you done that? Put ink on one side in some design and then you fold your paper over and you open it back up and you've got a exact mirror replica. That's what quadratics should do. And the square is what makes that happen because when you square a negative and you square a positive, you get that mirror of each other. And we saw that right here right? A negative two and a positive two gave me the mirror negative two, negative two. A negative one and a positive one gave me the exact same negative, negative, negative 0.25. And then that middle point, this was your turning point. So you notice your quadratic should always fold over that turning point. Okay. All right. So let's look, I want to skip down to number four, because we're only going to have time to do two examples here. <clears throat> So I'm gonna erase this. So start out by giving yourself a spot for your X. Write in your equation, Y equals three X squared minus four. Give yourself a little room to work it. You're outputting Y and then your X, Y, point that you're going to graph at the end. And my five X's. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to start working my first X of negative two. So I've got y equals three times negative two squared minus four. Now, some of these get a little bit more workier, right? There's a little bit more work involved. So if you can't squeeze it all in, you might have to cut, and I, that's why I left the whole bottom of your paper open, okay? So you might have to come down below if you need to do a little bit extra work because PEMDAS matters here. So I'm actually gonna come down here because I wanna be very clear about what order we're doing this. Okay, PEMDAS says powers first. So I'm gonna leave the three alone and I'm gonna take negative two to the second power, which is positive four. Now PEMDAS says multiplication. So I'm gonna take three times four, which is 12 minus four. And then last but not least, addition and subtraction. Jake, you need to stand up, pick up your pencil. You should be writing. You're sitting there with your eyes closed. Pencil's not even in your hand. 12 minus four is eight. So I'm gonna come back here in the Y spot and I'm gonna put an eight. And then I'm gonna write the ordered pair, negative two, eight. Okay, now I'm gonna do negative one. Y equals three times negative one squared minus four. Okay, PEMDAS says I do the square first, negative one squared is positive one. Then I do multiplication, three times one is three minus four, and three minus four is negative one. So I plug a negative one into my Y chart. And that's the point, negative one, negative one. My X was a negative one. My output was a negative one. Now I'm going to do the zero. Three times zero squared minus four. I think I can do this work up here. 
because zero squared is zero times three is zero. So I end up with zero minus four. And if you need to do it down, you can. Zero minus four is negative four. So that's the point zero, negative four. Now I should see a turnaround here. Let's do the positive one. Y equals three times positive one squared minus four. Well, oops, I'm gonna do it right next to this other blue one here. Y equals three times positive one squared minus four. Three times, well, positive one squared is one minus four. Notice what happens here. When I get to this point, because I just squared a negative and a positive, I get, I'm at the exact same point. Three minus four, negative one. So when my X value is positive one, my Y value is negative one again. So one, negative one. And again, I'm gonna do my two. So Y equals three, positive two squared minus four. And I'll do that over here. Y equals three times positive two squared minus four. Do the power first, two squared is four. Notice again, right? I'm back to the same spot I was in the other red one. Three times four is 12 minus four and I get eight again. So when I put in positive two and a negative two, I get the same eight. So two eight is that point. Now, last I'm gonna do is graph them. So I've got negative two eight. So I'm gonna go backwards two and up one, two, three, four, five. Now, if there's a problem and I can't fit it all on my graph, is there any rule that says every square has to be worth one? Can I make every square worth two? Can I make this negative, whoops. I can make this negative two, negative four, negative six. I can make this two, four, six, eight, right? I can go by twos. So I'm gonna go by twos here and I'm gonna graph negative two, eight right here. And then I'm gonna graph negative one, negative one. So negative one, negative one is right here. Oops, nope, that's not a negative. There we go, negative one, negative one is right here. Zero, negative four is my middle one. So zero, negative one, two, three, four is right here. Nope, I didn't go by twos, did I? If you're gonna buy, go by twos, I would label them because it'll help you not do what I just did. And then you're gonna do one, negative one. So one, negative one is right here. They should mirror each other. And then I'm gonna do two, eight, which is right here. And again, when I sketch my graph, which is your last point, you get a nice round U shape and it should mirror each other. So this is what I said by, I said they're not hard, but they do take a lot of actual work, okay? So you need to follow the six steps on each one of them and it is odds only on your homework.